Summer went by pretty quick, didn't it? I think. I think it's time for fall. And you know what that means? It's time for football and another edition of the ESPNBoston.com High School's Weekly Football Extravaganza. As always, I'm Scott Barboza, joined by my compadre, Brennan. How was summer? It was, uh, it was really good, actually. Yeah. But you know what? This is much better. <laughs> I think we're psyched and pumped and ready and amped to go. Yeah. But before we get any further, we want to welcome two of our new sponsors, which are the Sports Authority and the Bay State Games. Sports Authority, all things sporting good, are proud supporters of the Bay State Games, the state's largest athletic amateur festival. Now, Brennan, with all introductions aside, let's get to the task at hand here, which this year includes a brand new playoff proposal. We've been talking about this for a long time, folks. But just again, let's bring everybody up to speed a little bit and some of the things you're going to be looking for once we get into that week seven threshold and we get into the playoffs, which should be really exciting. Well, I, I think a couple of things. Uh, first off, the, the way things have, have really funneled out as far as the realignments and, and how everyone thinks set up, it doesn't get any better than Division Two South. No disrespect to Division One or any mm -hmm. other divisions out there, but Division Two South, you're talking about when Week Seven rolls around, just a gauntlet: Mansfield, King Philip, Natick, Needham, Duxbury, mm -hmm. Barnstable, and don't forget Wellesley's supposed to be better this year. Yep. Taunton's supposed to be better this year. You're talking about uh, just a just a, a big group of heavyweights there. Six of the teams in Division Two South were ranked in our preseason top 25 more than any other division. Uh, I, I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see how everything funnels out. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in Division One. though, we mentioned about that. Obviously, I think in Division One South, you look at Brockton and Bridgewater Raynham as favorites there. But, I mean, BC High is a variant. And then Weymouth, Franklin, that could get really interesting. And then Division One North, I think everyone had penned St. Mm -hmm. John's Prep as the, as the overwhelming favorite to start the year. But then losing Sean Sprzynski right before the season, uh, is a blow to their defense. He's a Holy Cross commit. Mm -hmm. um, and then you look at Lowell, which is on the rise. Central Catholic, which all reports have said they've looked pretty yeah. good this preseason. Particularly DeAndre Drummond yeah. Mayery at running back could have a really big breakout year. Yeah. And then Everett, you got to figure, there's only five or six real, you know, returning guys. Uh, everyone's so many fresh faces. But, you, I mean, this is the land of DiBiaso. In DiBiaso, we trust, they say, in Everett. Mm -hmm. you got to think they'll figure it out. And they're going to make some waves in the postseason. So uh, I, I think at the top they got it right as far as what divisions, uh, you know, host what teams. This is going to be, folks, this is going to be an unbelievable mm -hmm. postseason. One thing's pick up in week eight. Uh, I mean, you're talking about just the buildup every week, bigger and bigger, till we get here to Gillette Stadium at the end of the year. I think that it has huge potential. I, I really can't, can't wait to start on Friday here. You talk about Division Two South and then, even if whoever survives that gauntlet is going to have to play a team, whatever team comes out of the north. And then, oh, by the way, they got to pay the best to Central and oh. West as well. So oh. that's probably one of the more intriguing races that we're going to see across the state. And, of course, some of the finer intricacies here, which are, I think are going to be interesting to see how everything plays out logistically this year. Um, Central going without league qualifiers. I think uh, that's the, the best, truest way to do this. Uh, in Eastern Mass, of course, we remind you, Qualifiers from the conferences still matter. Mm -hmm. So you have to win your league, essentially, to get to the postseason, to give yourself the best chance to get to the postseason, I should say. And that's that's going to be a little interesting to see how that works out. But Central and West, they're going without. They're really just going to bring the best eight teams in each division, which I think is going to be highly entertaining. And uh, I think it's going to be good for everybody. But moving on from the playoffs, let's look at what we've seen in the preseason here. Obviously, hopefully you've been keeping up on the blog. We've been all over the state going through our top 25 previews, getting you scrimmage slants here and there. Brandon, some of the takeaways that you have uh, from this preseason period and what you've seen. I'll say the immediate takeaway I would say is a, a team like Everett, which had so many questions going into the season as far as personnel, uh, I think we, we figured that Raheem Wingard was going to take over at quarterback and he looks pretty comfortable back there so far in the preseason, but a bunch of new faces everywhere. Uh, the offensive line graduated four starters from last year. And Scott, quite frankly, they might be the only program in the Northeast that can graduate an All-American like Joe Montellis yep. and bring in a 350-pound, 6'5", 16-year-old kid uh, who's never played football in his life to play left tackle. <laughs> only in Everett, folks. Uh, but Joe D'Onofrio, uh, the transfer from Pope John, who, which is now to co-op with Chelsea, mm -hmm. uh, he's, a, he's an Everett guy. He's known Coach DiBiasso since he was five years old. I think it is really understated how much of an impact he's going to make. Catholic Central small MVP last year was a running back, had a tremendous season. Mm -hmm. He's got high 4-5 or five speed. Mm -hmm. He could really play the, the, the boundary, uh, that role that, that a couple years ago, Matt Costello and Manny Espria yep. played so yep. well as they just torched teams to the Super Bowl. Um, you're looking at, on the defense, obviously, they're going to be okay in the back seven. You mm -hmm. know, 
Uh, they're pretty settled at linebacker. C.J. Parvelis, Angel Duarte, mm-hmm. Joe D'Onofrio. And then um, in, in, in the DB spots there, Lubin Figaro, who's got 12 Division One FBS offers, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Vanderbilt, Boston College, Syracuse. And then Lucas Dennis, a kid who was initially penned to, to, to be the success for Jonathan DiBiaso a year ago at this time. Injuries piled up, and, and he's moved into an athlete role, but he'll solidify the secondary there. Um, he's starting to pick up some Division One interest. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to be settled there, but what I think the key is going to be for them is leadership. Mm-hmm. Who is going to step up? I think you have to have with every program, like an Everett, a St. Joseph Prep, you got to have a couple of guys back there that are going to really make people uncomfortable mm-hmm. and, and really push those guys. And I'm interested to see what leaders step up in that defense because they're going to need some. Um, another thing I picked up last year with defensive line in our All-State team, outside of Mo Hurst, it was really dominated by guys who, who were five techniques or kind of played finesse edge roles. And we got a couple of good ones this year. Alex Quintero from Lowell, I think, is one of the premier uh, pass rushers. Uh, finesse, kind of a speed rush. But he got some real war daddies. I like to call them war daddies. Big, big wide-bodied interior defensive lineman who can fill up a couple of gaps and really just push guys around, really put a guy on roller skates if they're, if they're manned up on singularly. John Baker, obviously the BC commit from Millis. He's one of the best around. But you're looking at a couple other guys. Chris Tinkham from Lynn English, uh, another wide-bodied guy, really held his own from what I've seen in preseason so far. And then obviously Will Grealish from Auburn. Uh, he's another big-bodied guy, the lone returning starter mm-hmm. from that <laughs> from that Super Bowl champion squad mm-hmm. last year. That was one of the best lines we'll, we'll see in some time out in that area in Central Mass. Mm-hmm. And then another guy I'm going to throw at you there, keep an eye on him, Hunter Solila from mm-hmm. Fitchburg. I just got to watch this guy's film the other night. Boy, can he can he make things happen in the middle, but also uh, playing a little bit on, on a five technique and kind of that Vince Wilfork role kind of moving mm-hmm. from, from, from tackle box to tackle box, really. Um, that's going to be really exciting to see. I think you're going to see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of guys really – overpowering people in the interior gaps, and that's going to cause a lot of havoc. And the other thing I'm really watching here is the pistol offense, and we've talked before about, you know, after pulling South and their run last year with Dylan Oxen, kind of got a, kind of a modified wing T pistol, mm-hmm. and, mm-hmm. you know, we, we watched it at the pro level with Colin Kaepernick, Russell Wilson, uh, you know, quarterbacks of that caliber. And that's trickled down now to the college level, not the high school level, and you're going to see more and more teams incorporate this in a variety of style. You know, I saw Lemonster run this with a with a, with a fullback offset uh, last week in the scrimmage. Um, Lowell, we've talked about before, kind of got in the West Virginia style, the air raid, but with pistol kind of looks in a little bit more zone read, and they kind of throw in some, some screens off the backside of that. Um, you know, you're going to see a lot of different variations of that. I'm really intrigued to see how teams continue to integrate that, and especially this year at Plum South with Dylan Oxen. Uh, he's got a tremendous offensive line to work with there. Sean Duncombe, the Bryant commit, uh, the most prone of the bunch, but He's going to have another big season. I think it's a difficult offense to really game plan for, and especially where you have the guys coming at full speed up the middle and there's so much different misdirection you can run out of that. Mm -hmm. It's really an exciting time right now in high school football with the amount of innovation that's going on. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a couple of our top five teams personally. Uh, Let's start with Mansfield. We're going to get to our week one picks here in a little bit, and obviously I think one game that we're all looking for is Mansfield traveling down to Dunbar, down to Maryland. Uh, It's going to be a very intriguing matchup. Uh, You know, talked to Mike Redding the other day. He knows what they're in for down there. It's not (laughs) going to be easy. But one little wrinkle that I'm going to look for this year with that Mansfield offense, and I talked about this the other day on our preview, is Mansfield's, uh, I guess you could say, evolution. Moving from a wing T team, you know, the Omari Walkers back in the day. uh, These big ground and pound offensive linemen that could really move piles. They're not really getting those kids anymore. So Redding's really playing to his strengths and what he has. And we've seen them move to a spread offense, but now I think they're gonna take perhaps the next step this year. I think they're gonna to look to move the pace, uh, kind of an Oregon type style offense where they get to the line extremely quickly. We saw the Patriots against the Buffalo Bills last year. It, running situations, passing situations, pushing the tempo. I think that's gonna be one thing that I could make, I, I think could make that offense even uh, a little bit more explosive than they were in years past. Uh, the other offense we're looking at, made it. We've talked a lot about them, obviously. Uh, tough situation for them. Brian Dunlap's missed some time in the preseason here. Went out with a scrimmage uh, about a week and a half ago now. Hasn't returned to the field. They're evaluating him, seeing what, uh, what the situation there will be with him. But by all impressions, I think Andrew Boynton is going to be a kid to really look out for this year. Uh, Troy Flutie is huge on him. He told me point blank the other night. 
this kid is going to be the difference maker for us this year. They might see him in the backfield a little bit with some two back looking sets, which could be interesting. Very interesting. And they'll move Absolutely. him out throughout the formation. So he's going to be a kid that I think defenses are going to have to look for. And then let's talk about Redding. He's talking you know about what you know what you're getting with the Rockets. We know what we're getting with Coach Fiore, <laughs> one of our loyal uh, wrestling fans who actually enjoys our <laughs> wrestling commentary. I'll give him a little plug there. But uh, are they going to let the chains go with Drew Belcher this year? It's going to be an interesting proposition because, as you mentioned the other day, Ryan Manny, obviously their top target last year, a great uh, you know receiver in that wide position last year. He's don't have him in the dynamic. So. What is you know the, the evolution of Redding's offense going to be? By all impressions, from what we saw in seven on seven, Drew Belcher looked like you know he looked like he took that next step over this offseason period. Bigger, faster, stronger. I mean, balls thrown on a rope. He's going to be an impact player no matter what. But I'm just interested to see to what extent uh, will he be in command of that Redding offense. I'd say also keep an eye on Liam Keneally from yeah, Redding. Absolutely. Uh, all, preseason All State as a linebacker, but in the offense. He's going to line up in a multiple roles. Mm -hmm. I got to watch a scrimmage against Andover last week. They're motioning him all over the place. He's lining up tight end, lining up in the slot, tailback, fullback. They got him all over the place. He's really going to be a difference maker all over that field. And then Jared DiLoretto, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Rob DiLoretto. <laughs> um, another another tremendous impact player. I mean, we saw him in 7-on-7, seven seven, some of the catches he was making. I think it's going to be an even bigger year for him this mm -hmm. year. So with that being said, folks, <laughs> let's take the uh, the shift focus here to week one and the matchups that we have. Obviously, a lot of great matchups coming in, highlighted by our ESPN Boston Game of the Week, which <laughs> kicks off in Everett with Springfield Central. Should be a great matchup. Should mention that our friends from Sports Authority and the Bay State Games will be there as well, handing out some free stuff. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Go check them out. Come check us out. Brennan will be there. It'll be a great atmosphere. But let's take a look at this matchup, Central, Everett. Obviously, two teams that I think uh, in their respective divisions will be featured prominently later in the season, but this could be a very telling game, I think, early on here. This is going to be an interesting test for Everett. I know I've, I've talked about them in the preseason, and they've, they've, they've looked all right, but I don't think people in this part of the state, I think they take for granted how good Springfield Central is, and, and they gave these guys a, a game for a half last year. I think people underestimate what kind of talent is coming out of the Springfield area right now. Um, we've talked a lot about last year with the Cape and all the talent coming out of there. Springfield is an up-and-coming area. And at the forefront is Cody Williams, one of the best quarterbacks to come out of there in a while. Monmouth commit. Oh, he's, he's one of the winningest quarterbacks right now among active quarterbacks in Massachusetts. 20-3 mm -hmm. as a starter going back to his sophomore year. It's pretty impressive when you think about it. Um, we talk about his, his, his talents, his exploits. But really the thing that really excites us, or, or me at least, I don't know, <laughs> is just his, his moxie and, and his – his his uh, spunk, you know, he's one of those guys. He's he he. You watch some of these quarterbacks on TV. Johnny Manziel, I think, is the best example. This guys who play with a chip on their shoulder, guys who aren't afraid to just get the, get their head in there, uh, chalk it up a little bit with the defense. He's a, he's a spunky kid, and it, and it really rubs off on the rest of those kids. It's a it's a it's a good area. They got, they got a great coach who really gets gets them all fired up. Valdemar Brower. He's had him going in the right direction for a number of years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's going to be a big difference. They don't see a quarterback like him too often. And I think this is going to be a test for Everett. You know, it, how seriously are they going to take these guys, but also, you know, how are they prepared? Mm -hmm. How have they come along since the beginning of preseason? Are, the, are these new guys getting it? I, 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 so I think we're going to see uh, an interesting matchup here. I, th I think a little bit more interesting than people are giving credit for. Let's talk a little bit about this Everett secondary, too. I think, you know, back in the day, Penn State used to be linebacker U. Yeah. You could really call Everett, and maybe Brockton uh, <laughs> as well, uh, secondary high school. Yeah. I mean, we've seen some pretty elite groups there. Obviously, they're going to lose some key elements there. Gilly D'Souza comes to mind mm -hmm. first and foremost, Chikari Washington. But this is still going to be a pretty darn good unit back there. Absolutely. Lupin Figaro, I think people underestimate how good of a season he had last year because he was the fourth best player in that secondary with Chikari Washington, you know, Phillips, and before mentioned D'Souza. But this, this is a guy who could play up in a box. This is a guy who played the slot in, in nickel packages. This is a guy who was a, who was a tremendous downfield attacker. He knows he knows his lanes, and he know, and he knows how to lower his shoulder and get mm -hmm. good good form. He's really out of position. And then Lucas Dennis, I'm really looking forward to see how he does back there. He's kind of the, the new ripple to the group there. Uh, really, uh, every year, year in year out, they got players, they got guys that can stick in there and, and really just make an immediate impact. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they do it. It's always something, something in the water over there in Everett, but uh, <laughs> it's fascinating year in, year out. It really is defensive back you. 
With our game of the week wrapped up, let's take a look at the rest of the fields in the state this week, along with our picks. This is always our favorite time of the year. And of course, the uh, most vocal time for most folks to get at us and let us know uh, what they think of our picks. Um, let's kick this off up north. MVC land, Tewksbury, Chelmsford, uh, two teams that I think, uh, you know, maybe are uh, a little bit uh, in, a, in somewhat of a rebuilding mode, but also have some really good parts to build around as well. Yeah, Tewksbury is the MVC small favorite. I don't think that's any question from anyone who's been watching them uh, from last year and over the offseason. They've, they've got a really great program running there. Um, the kid I really, I really look forward to watching this year is Eddie Matova. I think yeah. he's going to have a big year. Big year for them as both a running back and linebacker. Mm -hmm. I like Tewksbury's chance in this one. I'm going to go 28-17. I'm going to go with Tewksbury as well for the aforementioned reason. I think Chelmsford, uh, again, a team that'll, that I'll, I think will give Lowell and Central Catholic a push uh, in the MVC large division. But I think Tewksbury a little bit too strong here. I'm going to go in the same ballpark. I'm going to go 17-10. Uh, let's head down to the Cape. Mm -hmm. One of the great uh, rights of fall, you could say. Week one, we look for it every year. Dennis Yarmouth, Barnstable. Yeah. Um, it looks like they're still a little bit unsettled at quarterback at Barnstable, or are they just doing a really good job of keeping it quiet? But Chris Whitten is a little close <laughs> to the vest, as usual. <laughs> but I think wherever Hayden Murphy lines up, he's a dynamic player. Yep. I mean, you, we've seen it for three years now, uh, and I don't think it's any question. Um, I do think D.Y. is going to be much more competitive in this yep. game this year. Spencer Tyler, quarterback. Uh, Michael Dunn, kind of an athlete role. They got they got great, great athletes coming up in this in this program. It's going to be a close one. I think in the end, the DBs for Barnesville are going to seal it. Michael Gregory, Derek Estes, uh, we know we know what their capabilities are. Yep. Uh, I think they they pull it out 24-21. I'm going to go high scoring here. I think Barnstable, I think, that, as you mentioned before, it's going to be interesting to see, akin to Everett last year, how this Barnstable offense is going to evolve through the year. But obviously, uh, we know a lot of the prime players there. I'm going to go with Barnstable. I think it's going to be a little bit high scoring here. 33-27, we'll call it for the Red Raiders. Uh, let's go back to the MVC. Another one, uh, we already talked about Lowell, uh, obviously, in our preview to the season here. But a Westford Academy team, uh, Always going to be tough to play against. Yeah, I think people in Lowell are going to get upset that I'm giving them 30 points here against uh, Westford, sorry. But I think it's had it to be a, a track meet, really. I uh, look at Westford, and, and I know McKenna has moved on to Bill Ricca, but they, 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 that spread system they were running, and they get mm -hmm. the athletes for it. Mm -hmm. um, Lowell, I think it's I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how Brian Dolan takes over a quarterback for yep. the Reigns after yep. the, the, the run they've had the last couple of years with R.J. Noel and, and then Cam Lada mm -hmm. on their center at quarterback. But Lowell, they can, they can hurt you in so many ways offensively, and they're really going to stretch the field on you. I think they're gonna, it's going to be a 38-31 win for the Red Raiders. Yeah, I'm going to go with Lowell as well. Obviously, I've been pumping their tires a little bit, <laughs> calling them a potential favorite in D1 North, tomato, tomato. But I'm going to start it off and uh, go with Lowell. Yeah, let's call it 28-20. Uh, will be a little conservative there. I think they're going to play some defense this year, folks. Um, let's uh, shift it over again uh, up north, Andover. North Andover should be a great atmosphere. Uh, great, uh, you know, rivalry game here. Backyard rivalry should be a great atmosphere. Yeah, the passing game looks a little bit unsettled right now in Andover, but I can tell you one place there is no uh, nothing unsettled, and that's the running game. Jack Sylvester looked really sharp in the preseason, running that zone read, mm -hmm. really knows how to hit the holes and how to bounce off uh, and, and hit the cutback lanes. Mm -hmm. they got a, they got a good stable of, of running backs there. I think the running is pretty solid. Uh, I'm going to give Sylvester 150 yards, three touchdowns, Andover wins 24-20. Uh, it's a tough one to pick, but I think I'm going to go with a bit of an upset here. I'm going to go with Nail Thandover out of the gates here, just calling it on a whim. 17-10. I like the way they look early on. Uh, let's uh, interesting little backyard uh, game here that uh, with scheduling opening up a little bit here. Walpole Foxborough. Uh, you know, this should be a really interesting game. Really, more than anything, I'm kind of surprised these guys have never actually played each other in regular season. It's, Isn't that it's, fascinating? It's kind of startling. This is this is a this is like a backyard brawl's backyard yeah. brawl. Yeah. When you think about it, I mean, two two legendary coaches here, Jack Martinelli yep. and Barry Green, the the, the longtime uh, Walpole assistant now head coach. Uh, really, two really really good. You know, youth programs. Mm -hmm. uh, these kids grow up eating each other's McDonald's. They don't like each other. Okay, <laughs> contrary to what people will tell you. But I, I think Walpole pulls it out. I think it's going to be a real slobber knock, a real low-scoring affair here. Mm -hmm. I think Will Bolster and Connor Moriarty do enough to get it done. But boy, it's going to be ugly. I think it's going to be 10-7 Walpole. Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking low-scoring affair <laughs> too. This is going to be a, a real slobber knocker both ways in the trenches. <laughs> 
I like Walpole a little bit more, though. Obviously, they're going to be a little bit of a different look this year, but I really like Will Bolster, what we saw from him at the end of last year. He really seemed to kind of ease into that offense, particularly uh, you know when they had some injuries at running back there. So I'm going to go with Walpole. Uh, I'm going to go 20, uh, 2013, and we'll call it a day there. Um, let's head down to Maryland. Uh, <laughs> how many times do we say that in this yeah. uh, segment? But again, Mansfield traveling down to Dunbar. Dunbar, uh, really a national power, you could say. Um, multiple uh, FCS, FBS recruits across the roster. Does Mansfield have a chance here? Yeah, I think Table and Austin's alma mater is going to give them more than they can chill, <laughs> honestly. Uh, I, I, you know, a month ago I would have said, I think Mansfield can keep this close, but you look at what they've had in the preseason, battling a number of injuries. They're not mm -hmm. going to be really at full strength until late September. Mm -hmm. And there are a few teams that you want to go into not at full strength. Mm -hmm. And Dunbar is, is not one of those teams to be taken lightly. Three-time def defending Maryland State champs. Uh, I, I see them winning this one 35-14. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little close for a half, and then I think Dunbar will probably pull away in the second half, uh, maybe give it a nod to depth a little bit in the, in the program down there. Uh, let's call it 35-27. Uh, I'll have Dunbar uh, taking that <laughs> one. Um, this is another intriguing, um, you know, backyard. Uh, I don't really know when the last time these teams played, if they have at all, but Abington and Duxbury, uh, this one has a, has a potential to be very interesting. Yeah, and, and the Kilmaine injury is, is going to hurt Abington, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I would say they have a very good shot in this one. But Duxbury, they're going to they're gonna outweigh him at the point of attack. They're going to push bodies around. Uh, I think it's going to be a close game because I, I just think Abington is, is that kind of program that gets fired up, you know, like that. And you got this is a another not quite a ball rivalry, but teams teams on the south shore that that, yeah. that uh, you know they, they get up for each other. So, but I, I think I just think there's too much overwhelm there with, with Duxbury's offense and the, the running game. I see Duxbury winning this one 2010. I'm going to go with the upset here. I'm going to go with Abington, and I'm going to use the Kilmaine injury as a rallying point for the Green Wave. Uh, I think uh, Duxbury, obviously, we know what they have. Uh, they're going to be still very physical at the point of attack. But Abington, they've held their own against bigger, you know, perhaps more physical teams in the past. And just the way that Jim Kelly here has those kids playing, I'm going to call Abington with a big upset here. I'm going to go 12-7. We're going to go... Whoa. You know, just straight <laughs> rock fight down there. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at uh, Saturday, actually, before uh, we move back to some of our, our Friday night games. Uh, this really could be the game of the week um, if, if we didn't have uh, Central and Everett. But Bridgewater Random, St. John's Prep, potential, you know, Division One crossover north-south game here, a uh, game that uh, Bridgewater Random picked up last year. This has the potential to be a, uh, a real classic. This is going to be a game of possession, boys. Yeah. This is going to be a game of possession. Uh, obviously, <laughs> two of the better programs are playing possession. You've got the best running back in the state, Jonathan Thomas, at St. John's Prep. And you've got, you know, one of the best running attacks, you know, historically in Bridgewater Raynham. Mm -hmm. uh, Brandon Gallagher, preseason All-State selection, one of the top running backs in the 2015 class. It's really just... Uh, what's something's got to give here because these, these are both two talented, talented running games. I think they're going to have to shut down the passing game here. Mm -hmm. Jake Burt, we've seen him all summer, yeah. and they really feel they really feel high on this kid, really high on this kid. And then uh, Owen Rocket yep. uh, can can really stretch the perimeter of these guys. But I think Bridgewater Rams going to control the ball here. They're going to put together a couple long drives, and that's going to put prep in a bind a little bit. I got BR with the upset, 14-7. Ooh, big time. <laughs> I'm almost going that way, but uh, I got to tell you, I was talking to Jonathan Thomas last night. He was talking about what he's seen on the film so far from BR and Brandon Gallagher, and uh, he took a pause for a moment, and he just said, man, that kid's a beast. <laughs> so <laughs> definitely a lot of mutual respect there. This is going to be you know, strength against strength, power against power. I'm going to go with St. John's Prep. I think the passing game could be the difference here with those weapons you mentioned before. I'm going to go with Prep. 14-7, meat and potatoes. Um, let's keep it on Saturday for a little bit here. Uh, Beverly coming off their first undefeated season in program history against a team in Haverhill that's been building in the last mm -hmm. couple years and uh, still should be, even without a, key, a couple key elements from last year, should still be a very tough team. We are aiming to watch here in this game. We've written about him preseason. Michael Quegirata, yep. second year ever playing organized football, and he just happens to be 6'2", 215, <laughs> runs like a beast. Uh, I, I think this kid is going to make a difference immediately in mm -hmm. this game against against Beverly. Uh, I got Haverhill winning 23-14. I'm going to go with the Hillies as well. Tim O'Connor, I mean, he's really gotten this whole program on board. they got more kids coming out uh, than they really have in recent memory. I'm going to go with the Hillies here, call it by a touchdown 20-13. to 13. 
Um, let's go back to Friday night for a little bit here, one that I glossed over previously. BC High, North Attleboro. A couple of teams that I think in the preseason are both uh, on off both those offenses looking to find some kids to step up into some key roles. This should be an interesting game. I think after last year, BC High is ticked off. Been a little bit upset with the way things went last yep. year with with a more talented team, frankly. But this is the kind of group that Joe Graff really likes. Guys that are flying on the radar, but guys that really, mm -hmm. really outwork are gonna work outwork everybody. I think they got a lot to prove here and they're gonna prove it Friday night, first step getting revenge on North Attleboro after they ran basically every direction they yeah. wanted to against yep. them last year. Yep. I think BC High wins this one. Ground game is going to be real solid for mm -hmm. them, 21-7. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Eagles as well. I think they really come in with the chip in the shoulder. Uh, again, a four-win season over there. Just isn't going to cut it, and, and these kids are going to be very motivated. Looking for BC High to actually open it up a little bit here. I'm going to go, uh, let's call 27-17. Mm -hmm. And then let's wrap it up again. Our game of the week, you know it. Sports Authority will be there. Base State Games, Brennan. Whole hoopla, great stuff going on. Central, Everett, give me a score. Are you ready for this one? I don't know. Are you sure? I don't know. Are you guys sure? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. I'm, I might get mobbed in Everett for this one. <laughs> okay. You ready for this? I don't think you're going to get a motorcade. <laughs> when have I ever gotten a motorcade? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Springfield Central, 24, Everett, 23. You're going to win in the last drive. Cody Williams is, is going to put, put himself into folklore here. I think, I think Central is going to make a statement for the rest of the state that they are not to be overlooked. I got Central winning this one, and it's going to be biggest upset in a while. <laughs> you could say since last year at Barnstable. At, uh, true. At Memorial Very true. Stadium. Biggest upset since last year. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to go with Everett. I'm going to go, uh, again, as you mentioned, off the top. D'Onofrio, I think, is going to be the breakout player of the year across the state, really. be interesting to see, again, with this Everett offense. As we said last year, you know, Spartakits offense, uh, <laughs> whoever is going to step up and play quarterback on that particular day. I think we're going to see a little bit of that again from uh, the Crimson Tide, maybe returning back to their roots uh, in the early 2000s and 90s a little bit. But uh, I'm going to go with the Crimson Tide here. I think it's going to be a close game no matter what. But uh, I'm going to go with Everett. We'll call it 24-21 uh, field goal being the difference. Mm -hmm. um, with that, I think that gives us a, a wrap here on week one. Brennan, i got to tell you, I'm just really excited for this year coming up. Locked and loaded. Locked and loaded. And be sure to be with us every Friday night. Got a couple new things we're going to roll at you on Friday nights. We'll explain that in the blog in a, in a little bit. Uh, for now, though, um, we thank you for tuning in to us again. This is this is an incredible year. Year four. It's hard to believe, it's you know, crazy. four years ago. Yep. Uh, what, how we've jumped leaps and bounds and I, we got to thank you the reader uh, for following us as much as you have both on the website and on social media you guys are the best you, make, you guys make this job so much fun Absolutely. we look forward to doing another season with you guys so thank you there's going to be a lot of new things of course look for uh, starting in week three our bracketology installment now we're going to bring to you what we hope is a little bit of an inside look about which teams across the state and across all divisions have the inside track to their playoff berth in weeks once week seven comes. So we'll watch out for that on the blog. And without that uh, further ado, I think Brennan said it perfectly. We'll see you Friday night in Everett. Until then, I'm Scott Berboza. He's Brennan Hall. We'll see you next time on ESPNBoston.com High Schools.